people who truly love and obey God. So we build up a ministry team in a congregation with people who truly love and obey God. So we select those people who truly love God and obey God and we build up a ministry team. Acts 6.3 Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So choose those people who have good reputation and full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. 1 Timothy 3, 2 A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside. So we choose people who are blameless, that they, are, they have good character, they have a good relationship with God, and they care about people, and they take care of their own problems. So we want to select people like this to form a ministry team to help other people. So train them to be able to serve God and help others. So train them so that they can serve God and help other people. Then this, they are like the pillars of the church. That the church doesn't, is not just strengthened by the pastor alone. It should be strengthened by key members who are, have been trained. So we, if we want to bring a revival to a church, we want to train people so that they will have, they know how to do it and they are motivated to do it and they will do it instantly. Whenever they see newcomers, whenever they, they will go up to help them, welcome them. And when they see members coming in, they will welcome them, they will talk to them and pray for them. So we want to train a ministry team that, and uh, also even when a pastor uh, has gone away to preach somewhere, then these people can take care of the newcomers and welcome the people. And then the, we should lead the leader, leaders of, and the members to care for members and newcomers and to do evangelism. So the pastor should lead them, uh, not just train them to do it, but we lead them. We do it together with them, that we guide them together, that we uh, do it together with them. Like if there is a newcomer, then we'll take a couple members with us and go to welcome that newcomer. And show the, to the uh, members how we do it, how we welcome the people. So they learn from us. So that is uh, leading them to, uh, to care for other people together with us. So they learn from us. And Paul said, you know, in Acts 20, 35, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive so Paul has shown them in every way by laboring like this, that he has worked hard, and people can see that, that you must support the weak, that they will help the weak. And also it's more blessed to give than to receive. So Paul has demonstrated that in his life. So as pastors would we'll demonstrate to the members that we care for the people, we love the people, we help the people. So people can see that we are, we are very, diligent in helping people. We, are, we really have a lot of love for the people. Then people can see our example and learn from us. So we ourselves set good examples for them. And we provide opportunities for them to serve God and open ways for them to serve God. So we give them opportunities. We lead them to do it and then we tell them to do it. So they have all the opportunities to help other people and we evaluate what they do and help them to improve. So after they do it, we'll talk with them and say, ask them how it is when you help these people. Uh, uh, do you have fear? Can you manage their needs? Can you talk with them? Can you have good communication? Do they enjoy talking with you? Are they helped? So we find out. Now if they say, I don't know what to say, you know, then we'll find out uh, what's the problem? Maybe he needs more training, that he needs to learn to how to talk with people and care about people. Maybe they haven't learned that, so they don't know how to care for people. So we need to continue to train them until they can improve. Now let me give you an example in our group, that uh, Global Fire Missions Ministries in, in Hong Kong, that there is one woman who had a lot of emotional problems. 
actually who was withdrawn from many people he could not she could not relate to people well but after she came to our group we continued to help her counsel her to raise her life up and then now she's she has been doing evangelism she trying to talk to the people in her neighborhood she tried to talk to her neighbors and help them to believe in Jesus he she tried to counsel them so she has changed totally in the past she dare not talk to people and she was emotional and now she has more joy and she was willing to talk to people and and relate to them and help them spiritually so that's how we can train people and change people so the more the people see our example and more they are trained then they change more so I hope that we all would do that in a church that we want to train people and lead them to do it then we then all these people one day when they see Jesus 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 will say you are uh, good and faithful servants then you know that is for our honor that the people whom we serve they they serve God very well and they are good and faithful servants now as pastors we don't just do good ministry ourselves we want to help our members to do good ministry we want to help our members that they are able to do good ministries that you know Jesus you know told us that in uh, Matthew uh, 28 uh, 19 to 20 that he said that you know teach them to observe everything I've taught you so whatever I've taught you teach them to obey not just to you know not just to understand but to obey so it's not just we when we go to Jesus and Jesus said you have been a good and faithful servant but Jesus will say how about your members have you helped your members to be good and faithful servants have you trained them have, have you helped them spiritually and then train them to serve God and then you lead them to serve God and you evaluate what they do and so to help them to do better so that is growing in the Lord that is growing in the Lord that we not only we serve God well but we train other people to serve God well that is the important thing and also we train them so that they can train other people to do the same thing too so it keeps going on one generation to another generation so we train them not only you know first they will love God and serve God and help other people and then they can train other people to love God and serve God and to help other people so this way whomever they talk to they will try to change and then they will be able to motivate other Christians to follow God and love God and serve God and then God will say you're really good and faithful servant because you have trained other people to train others you have trained people to be good servants not only you are a good servant but you have trained other people to become good servants and then we appreciate what they do for God and publicly acknowledge that now that gives them encouragement so not only do we tell them to do it but we appreciate what they do and they, we say to them thank you for doing it thank you for helping them thank you for being kind to them and then we publicly acknowledge that it uh, the person has been so faithful to help people that is wonderful so we we, we publicly acknowledge that so mark 9 41 for whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ as surely I say to you he will by no means lose his reward so Jesus appreciate what we do when we give a cup of water to someone because that person belongs to Christ so Jesus uh, acknowledge what we do and he rewards us he is happy with what we do and he'll reward us so the same thing with us we acknowledge what our members do for God and we appreciate them and we can say that publicly and say you know these people have been so faithful they have been helping other people and God remembers that and I remember that and I appreciate that so that way the people get motivated when we appreciate what they do that you know we don't just criticize them now when we see any problem we'll talk to them one by one and one to one and to help them to uh, face the problem if they have any problem in a ministry uh, and then uh, but you know but, but but we want to put more attention to what they do what they do well 
and we want to appreciate what they do well. In Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good reports, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So Paul said, if there is anything true, anything that is noble, that what they do is noble, that is just, what they do is just, is, is the right thing to do, is fair and is pure, is, is not sinful, but is pure, is holy. And whatever things is lovely, is worthy to be loved. And whatever things are good reports, that it, it gives us a good report and people say this is good, he is doing well. So if there is any virtue, anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So if that what they do is praiseworthy, we meditate on them and say, wow, that's good. And if we help other people to meditate on them by telling them what these people have done for God. So we want to appreciate God for everything the people do for God. That will encourage the people very much. Now, there are some pastors, they just criticize the members that by saying, oh, I told you, what to do and you didn't do it well. That, that doesn't encourage the people. Now, we need to tell them if they do something wrong, but we want to tell them gently. But we want to put more time appreciating them and telling them and telling other people that they are doing well. They, they have worked hard. Even though, even if they're res they don't have good results, but if they work hard, then we say you have worked hard on it. That is a good thing. 15. Lead the whole church to pray for guidance for the direction of the church. So we, we need guidance for the whole church. Acts 13, 2, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So uh, the Holy Spirit you know, said to them when they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So when they prayed together, they fasted together, the Holy Spirit said, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul and send them to do uh, the work that God has called them to do. So that is praying together for God's guidance. And in early church when they pray, then the Holy Spirit said, Send Barnabas and Saul. So we too, we pray in the church for guidance. For guidance, how to lead the church. So train the people to get used to paying attention to God's guidance in their lives. Now, we all can hear God's voice. All Christians can hear God's voice. Now, the most common voice that we hear is that when we sin, we feel guilty. Because that's what says in John 16, 8, uh, that it says that there, the, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict you of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That the Holy Spirit will convict us of our sin and of righteousness, that we should obey this, uh, follow this righteousness, and also of judgment the judgment to come. So, um, so Christians, they hear this voice of the Holy Spirit convicting them of their sins. But also the Holy Spirit will guide us to trust in Jesus. If not for the Holy Spirit, no one can say that Jesus is Lord. That's in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, that people will say that Jesus is Lord. That is because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And also that the Holy Spirit will also produce fruit in our lives that we would be motivated to love God and obey God, to do evangelism to a certain person, to be kind to a certain person. So that, those are the voice of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will guide us to read the Bible and also to respond to the word of the Bible and also to respond to the, uh, to the messages in our heart. We would, you know, when we hear messages, the Holy Spirit will remind us to obey the word that being taught in the in the sermons. So these are ways that people get used to paying attention to God's guidance in their lives. Now for me, I receive a lot of uh, guidance from God about teaching. Now I don't hear a voice, but I just have these ideas pop up in my mind, just come up in my mind to motivate me, to tell me how to teach. So I hope that you pay attention and train the people to pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit when we sin, when we pray, when we uh, hear the pre preaching, when we read the Word of God. 
And also when we pray for guidance that we can sense what God wants us to do. Uh, for some people, at least they can sense what God doesn't want them to do. For instance, some people says, oh, I want to, I really like this non-Christian girl. But then they will hear a voice inside them, tell them not to go to this non-Christian girl. So that is a voice from God to tell them not to do that. So train them to pay attention to the voice of God in their lives. Some people have voice, some people have have thoughts come into the mind and then set apart one to three days for retreat and praying for the church so have a retreat uh, of the church that the people gather together for one day or more that they will worship God and pray together for different things in the church and pray for guidance from God and when they hear from God they will tell the pastor and then they will write down together and pray together which one of these uh, or uh, what the church should do now okay and then write down all the messages received and discuss to find out the direction of the church so we want to find out the direction of the church and the direction of uh, a person too as a pastor as a Christian what direction should we take what changes should we take what are some action we should take some what are some new ministry we should go into so We'll pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will talk to us. So we lead the church, the whole church to pray together for the direction of the church. And then the church will have, a, the members will have a sense of belonging. So they will sense that the church belongs to them, that they have a voice in the church. They can ask for God's guidance and then can, they can receive from God what to do. Okay, 16, protect the church. Don't let any sin, any division, any person or Satan stop the revival. So when we revive the church, we want to protect the church so that you know, sin or people's problem or Satan cannot uh, destroy the, uh, the revival. Because the thief doesn't come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. So Satan come to steal, kill and destroy so we are motivated by God's grace to obey Him and take care of all sins. We want to handle the sins of ourselves and, and of others. So, so we want to mo be motivated by God's grace, that we really appreciate God's grace and say we live in God's grace. God is blessing us. So I enjoy God and I want to obey Him. I don't want anything to affect my Christian life, to affect the church, to affect the ministry. So we are motivated by God's grace. We are living under God's grace. We are blessed, blessed by God's grace. And then we pay attention to the problematic attitudes that would bring division. So any kind of uh, problematic attitude. For instance, people say, uh, it doesn't matter what I do. I don't have to do anything like that. Oh, I don't like that person. You know, those are negative attitudes. And then negative thoughts. The thought like, I'm useless. Uh, the Bible is too harsh, uh, the pastor is, uh, doesn't help us, you know, so any kind of negative thought. And speech, pay attention to the speech that they don't speak against each other, or uh, they don't gossip, they don't say things that would uh, cut people down and make people feel bad. And all action that will cause division of the church. So if they do any action that will hurt other people, that will make other people feel discouraged, so we pay attention to those things, that we want to stop them. We want to teach the people not to have negative attitudes, thoughts, and speech, and behavior. For instance, pride, if anyone is proud, we want to talk to them one-to-one, -one because pride will destroy the group and also make people feel unhappy. The people will dislike this person and then it will cause division. And then some people despise other people. They look down upon other people. And they, some people hunger for power. They just want power. They want to be the leader only just for power. And or hunger for money. They just want money. And mishandling of people and situation that they uh, mishandle. They don't handle the people well. They don't handle the situation well. They mistreat people and they don't have wisdom to, to take care of problems. And then so these are problematic attitudes, problematic things. And then appreciation of what God has done for us will protect us. When we appreciate God has given us this spiritual life, God has given us 
eternal life. God is working in our life. God is guiding us. God is blessing us. And God is giving us the church blessing, the church. So we see all these things and then we say, God is so good to us. We don't want to lose this blessing. We, want to, we don't want to lose this blessing. So I hope that you don't want to lose the blessings that God has given you already. That you want to enjoy God. You want to stay in His blessings. You don't want anything to take away the blessings of God. And then 17, build up momentum of the church. Acts 2, 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church uh, daily those who were being saved. So in the early church, when they praised God together and have favor with all the people, that they were nice to all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily. T daily, there were people who were converted, those who were being saved. So that is a momentum that the church becomes more and more powerful. So let the people participate in the ministry. So everyone participate in ministry together and pray together with the people for God's strong presence and blessings. So we first let the people participate in ministry. They all do ministry together and we pray together with, uh, you know, with an open heart, with our spirits so that the presence of God will become powerful and strong and the blessings of God will come powerfully. And then we appreciate people for what they have done for God. Help them to be encouraged. So, and then we publicly appreciate what people have done. And then uh, we say, well, that is good. And, and encourage them to continue to do more. And encourage other people by saying, hey, look at these examples. They are so good. So we encourage people by what they do for the church and for God. And evaluate how we have been doing and pray for wisdom and momentum to continue growing. So how can, you know, evaluate what we have been doing? Are we doing well? In what area are we doing well? In what area need to, we need to grow? And then pray for wisdom, that God will give us wisdom and momentum. Momentum is like the forward force, that the church is growing. There's a force that's going forward. And you want the momentum to keep going. We don't want anything to stop it. We don't want any sin to stop it. We don't want any negative attitude and ne negative action to stop the momentum, the power of the church that's growing. We don't want it to be stopped. We want it to continue to grow. So it's very important to keep the momentum. One is start growing. We want the momentum to continue. Okay? So let's look at the, the points again. How to revive the spiritual life of a church. Okay? So we ourselves love God with all our hearts. We ourselves. And then we believe in God's goodness and enjoy God. So we believe that God is good and we enjoy God. That we know that when we pray to Him, He's very happy. And that bring, bring blessings and, and it shows in our lives that God's goodness will show in our life. And then we have a close relationship with God so that our lives are full of God's spiritual fruit and people will be drawn to that. So a close relationship with God for the, for the leaders. And then we have mercy and compassion on people that we want to care about the people, really, really care about them. Uh, we know their needs and counsel them and help them. We motivate people by telling them God's goodness and that God wants to bless them so that so they will trust in God and enjoy God and want to obey God. So we enjoy, encourage people with God's blessings. God wants to bless you. God wants to raise you up to a high level. God wants to do great things in your life. But we'll also remind them with the law uh, and uh, you know consequences of sin that if they sin, there are serious consequences. But this should not be the main motivation. Some preachers, they just keep every time, they just say, you have to repent, you have to repent, you have to commit a sin, you have to repent. They just emphasize on, you have to repent. We should emphasize on, God is good to us. We, we are preaching God. We're not just preaching sin. Some preachers are just preaching sin. And we want to preach God's goodness. God, we want to let people see how good God is. God has a lot of blessings planned for you. When you love God, God wants to pour all these blessings upon you. And God will bless your life. So follow God. But if we sin, then it can bring destruction. So don't sin. Uh, whenever you, we sin, we repent and then we turn away from the sin. So we remind them of the consequences of sin. But this should not be the main motivation. 
And then we help them to experience the Holy Spirit and let them know they can serve God with God's power. So we help them to experience the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, pray for them, lay hand on them, and then they can serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit. And eight, lead the people to pray with faith and hunger for God to bring a strong presence of God. So they believe that God is happy with them when they pray with faith and hunger for God. And that will bring a strong presence of God. And God will do great things. And number nine, train people to pray with faith in God and enjoy praying, believing that God blesses those who believe, those who pray. So train them to pray in faith that believing that when they pray, God is very, very happy and they can enjoy praying so that they have more strength and then also that will bring more blessings from God. And then how to be filled with the Holy Spirit that we repent and turn away from all sins and believe, follow the Bible and believe that God wants to fill us and spend long time loving God, hungering for God and obey God and take care of the problems in our life and the laying on of hands and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. And then 11, train people to help others so that the church has care for the members and the newcomers. So the members participate together to train people, uh, to train people to be able to help other people, to counsel people and to pray for people. And select and build up a ministry team in the congregation with people who truly love and obey God. So select those who truly love God and obey God and train them. Build up a ministry team. And then lead the leaders of the members to care for members and newcomers and to do evangelism. So lead them together to serve God together. Uh, that we do it together with them. We don't just tell them to do it, but we do it together with them. And then we appreciate what they, what they do for God and publicly acknowledge that. So we publicly acknowledge what the people have done for God and we thank God for that. When they bring someone, we'll appreciate that. We publicly acknowledge that. And five, lead the whole church to pray for guidance for the direction of the church. So the whole church pray together for God to guide them. And 16, protect the church. Don't let any sin, any division, any person and Satan or Satan to stop the revival. Don't. So don't let any sin, any problem, any person or Satan to stop the revival and build up the momentum of the church that when the church is going forward, don't let anything stop it. Keep growing. That when we have this strength, we build on this strength and encourage the people you can do greater things. You can be strengthened by God. You can do greater things for God. You can be revived. So we encourage them that these people can, you know, when we have a growth, now that we can continue to grow, we can continue to grow in the Lord. So we encourage them to continue this momentum, to let, not to let anything stop this growth. Okay. Now, if you have any question, you can send in the WhatsApp group right now. Okay, we'll pray now for God's strength so that we'll love God and obey God and, and bring a, um, and bring a, um, revival to the church and keep the revival so we want to bring a revival a revival to the church how to revive the spiritual life of the church okay let's pray you can stand up and be sensitive to the swaying of the holy spirit father we thank you we love you because you are a kind god you're a good god you're kind you're good you're gracious to us lord you're gracious to us lord you're wonderful you are full of blessings. You are a wonderful God. Please help us to love you, to have a good relationship with you, and then be strengthened by you. Then we open our heart to you and hunger for you. Lord, we hunger for you. We desire you. Hallelujah. We worship you. We adore you. We need you. Father, we need you. We depend on you. You are so wonderful. Help us to enjoy you. And also train other people so that they will enjoy coming to God also that they will be strengthened by God also. And also we'll train them to serve God, train them to love other people, train them to counsel people and pray for other people, to bring a revival to the church. That we want to build up the momentum of the church, that people have this, they, they will care about, care about the church, care about the growth of the church. 
they will put effort into building the church. They will put effort into strengthening the church. They will put effort to build up the church. Father, we pray that you l l help us to be good leaders that will train other people to be revived. We build up a momentum and, and we acknowledge what they've done for God. And we appreciate what they've done for God. And then they would feel encouraged. And God is happy too, because God appreciates what they do. And when we do the same thing as God, that we do appreciate what other people do, then God is also happy that we appreciate other people. Lord, help us to, to really live in your love, to have your power, your strength, have your infilling of the Holy Spirit, that we have strength from you, that we can do greater things for you. Father, we need you. Father, we need you. We worship you. We adore you. We need you. Father, we need you. We, and we know that you want to fill us with the Holy Spirit. You, you want to anoint us. We want to, you want to strengthen us. Lord, help us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. You are so wonderful. Hallelujah. Your name be glorified. May your name be glorified that people love you. Help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now it's crying to God like, to God like that. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Praise you, Father. You're so wonderful. I love you. I worship you. I adore you. I hunger for you. I want you. I need you. Father, you're so good. Father, you're so good. We need you. We hunger for you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We know that when we come to you, you are very happy and you bless us for sure. Oh Lord, help us, strengthen us, give us more uh, motivation to build up the spiritual life of the church so that there is revival in the church and revival in our area and revival in the country and revival to the world. Lord Jesus, use our life, Lord. Use our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.